So version one customers of Exadata reported a 10 to 50 times uh, performance improvement over their previous installation, which could have been um, traditional storage or it could have been an Exadata competitor. Uh, now Oracle claims version two is two to five times faster than version one. Um, the version two press release cited over a million random IOs per second. So that would make it the fastest database machine in the world. Hi, I'm Lisa Laforte. I'm a solution architect and I work for BI Consulting Group. I've been in the data warehousing arena for over 15 years. Uh, Oracle Exadata is Oracle's high performance, very competitively priced, uh, advanced storage solution to resolve IO bottlenecks, which are the most common problem plaguing large data warehouse implementations. Uh, in an ideal world, everyone's data warehouse configuration would have been sized for performance. So there would have been an assessment at the very beginning about what peak demand is going to be, how much throughput do you need to sustain the um, acceptable report performance at peak demand, and then all of the hardware components in the architecture would have been sized to sustain that level of throughput. But um, that's not how it works in the real world. Um, most uh, data warehouse implementations have an unbalanced configuration. So whatever the weakest link in the hardware architecture is, is going to determine what your overall throughput is. And most often, that is the storage solution. Um, there's many reasons for this. Um, it's inherently challenging to try to create a balanced performance-sized uh, hardware configuration. Um, it's also often true that it's a disk technology is a great place to cut costs. So even if your IT department went through an exercise like this, uh, it's perfectly possible that at the last minute, management looked over what was proposed and said, I know we can buy some cheaper, slower disk and save some money. And it's also just inherently challenging because disk performance is just totally outclassed by CPU performance right now. Um, XA achieves this incredible level of performance uh, through massively parallel architecture and three primary avenues of attack. Um, the first one is uh, increased bandwidth, and that's achieved by having more pipes and bigger pipes. Um, more pipes means more interconnects than in traditional storage, and also a greater number of them. There's more interconnects with each building block of the grid storage, so uh, your storage capacity and your bandwidth actually scale, which is not what's usual for traditional storage. Um, these are also bigger pipes, um, much faster pipes than uh, traditional fiber channel. These are um, infinity band connects or um, fabric, and they're the, the QDR technology for anyone who, who's a super geek. Um, and also reduce data volume through smart scan technology. So you have more pipes, you have pipes with greater bandwidth, and you're ultimately shipping less data through the pipes. All right, what is the difference between Exadata and the database machine? Um, a lot of the mat marketing materials appear to use those terms interchangeably, but they're not really interchangeable. Um, Exadata actually refers to the storage solution only, and the database machine is the Exadata storage server combined with an Oracle database. So if you buy a database machine, you get um, all of the capability of Oracle Rack plus the high performance storage. The warranty and the service are provided by Oracle, not by HP or Sun and Oracle actually installs and configures everything for you right down to the database parameters. Um, and they include professional consulting services. So literally, you wheel it in, you turn it on, um, Oracle will get it up and running for you, and if there's any tuning that's needed, Oracle will do that for you as well. All right, there are two, actually there's, there's two options for uh, version one and there's four options for version two. The version one options were the full rack or the half rack, and a full rack means you get an eight node rack, 11G R1 database, you get 14 cells, four infinity band connectors, and this scales easily to eight full machines connected together. Um, you also have the half rack option, which is just half the components of the full rack. Um, both of these configurations are still available with version two, but now the new introductions are a quarter rack and a basic configuration, which is basically a single instance database and one exadata cell. Um, the, the big hardware addition for version two is the addition of the Sun FlashFire memory cards that do caching. That's what enables version two to support OLTP databases as well as data warehouse style databases. Um, the Sun FlashFire memory cards are what get you to the million random IOs per second. Um, this is the only database machine that will support both OLTP and data warehouse applications. So the idea is that you can buy Exadata storage and build yourself you know, one shared disk farm on Exadata, and then you can connect all of your enterprise's databases to it, whether they're OLTP databases or data warehouse databases. Um, another feature that helps you extract more performance from Exadata 
is the Oracle Database Resource Manager. It's also been called the IO Resource Manager. So you might see DBRM or IORM as acronyms referring to the same technology. Um, basically, this is a way to categorize and prioritize demand for IO on your system. You can hook up multiple databases to the same storage array, so you can prioritize um, the tasks or activities that come from different databases. For example, anything coming from your production database automatically gets priority over anything coming from your development database. Um, you can also categorize groups of users, so if your executives are more important than your worker bees. Um, you can prioritize individual tasks, um, like the queries that you use to seed your OBI cache uh, first thing in the morning have priority over everything else. Um, the idea is that you use this to manage competition for I.O. resources, and efficient management of competition actually results in greater throughput for everyone. So um, this, in addition to all the hardware technology, increases performance um, from the user's perspective. All of the performance gains that are discussed um, coming from Exadata are purely from the hardware and software technology. They're not based on actually re-architecting your data in any way. So the first thing I would recommend doing is contacting your Oracle sales rep, and they can put you in touch with the, um, the platform technology services uh, department in Oracle, and they actually may be willing to come out and do a proof of concept with you, um, especially uh, if it gives them an opportunity to show how they um, beat a competitor, and especially if your particular company is uh, an important one in your industry. Um, if it's basically a, a mutually beneficial relationship, you might even be able to get Oracle to do it for you for free. Sure, one of the biggest um, competitive advantages over Natiza is that you get the full capability of an Oracle 11G database. By comparison, um, what Natiza offers, just in terms of database technology, is um, much more primitive. So um, Oracle blows them away in terms of the actual capability of the database. Um, they have done um, several head-to-head -head competitions um, for customers that have Natiza or are doing a uh, um, uh, a choice between Netiza and the competitors of Netiza, and Oracle will beat them on straight up performance. Uh, and uh, in generally, the uh, competitive advantage over Teradata is lower cost of ownership, total cost of ownership over five years. And if this is something that you're particularly interested in, um, Oracle actually has collateral doing head to head comparisons of what all of the advantages are over both of those two competitor technologies. The most important takeaway from today's presentation is that Oracle Exadata is the fastest database machine in the world.